after the Holy Spirit had come upon those first believers, they're speaking in languages that they weren't trained in, and the others around them that were gathered there um, from different countries, they're like, these people are speaking in my native language, praising God. It actually gave Peter, Peter who walked with Jesus, it gave him a platform to share the gospel because the focus wasn't the signs and wonders. You know, throughout scripture, we can see that God did use signs and wonders, but there was purpose in that. You know, it was to show his power. It accomplished his purpose, but it wasn't about the signs and wonders. It's all said and done. The Lord is concerned about you. Are you going to spend eternity with him or not? In the book of Acts, Peter has their attention. And what does he do? You can go look in Acts 2 to read about it, but he did share the gospel. And those people that were there heard the gospel. Now when they, those people that were gathered around, heard the gospel that Peter just preached to them, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Other parts of scripture were taught that one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin. And that's the example we have right here. They heard the gospel and they were cut to the heart. It was doing a work in them and they were convicted. We are sinners. We need to be saved. We need to be made right before God. What do we do? Repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to tell him to be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, 3,000 souls were added to them. So he shares the gospel and no, not everybody received it. But praise the Lord, 3,000 people did. And it added to the church that day, just in one day. The focus wasn't on those people speaking in the languages. He quickly diverted their attention to the scriptures and sharing the gospel. When Jesus told his disciples to not only go and share the gospel, but then teach those new disciples everything that I've taught you. You know, disciple them. Teach them my ways. And that's exactly what the next scripture says that they did. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Teaching is part of it. And then also in fellowship. So they had fellowship with one another. In the breaking of bread, they celebrated communion to remember Jesus. Jesus said, do this in remember, remembrance of me. Communion when he was in the upper room. And in prayers. So that's what they continued on in, the teaching, praying, fellowship, communion. And that really is what makes up a church, you know. So, you know, whether you're gathering in a home or in a church building with other followers of Christ, this is what that looks like, you know. It doesn't look like a circus show. It doesn't look like, oh, everybody just fall all over. When you go through the scriptures, I'm telling you, what is presented in the, in the name of Jesus on social media and in a lot of churches today doesn't line up with the scriptures. And that is a big deal because if you're really wanting to follow the Lord, follow the Lord, not follow man. Because there's a lot of people deceiving. There's a lot of people coming in the name of Jesus. So that's why you got to get to know the Lord and through his word.